Good morning. Oh, a bit too much chest hair there. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ow, ow. <laughs> Ah, oh, too much, too much mousing. I've got a carpal tunnel syndrome. I normally only get it when I've just bought a new computer and I'm mucking about on flight simulator late into the night, but I bought this uh, now. Okay, dentists, we all have a requirement, don't we, to store data. We've all, most of us have got computer systems, apart from, one dentist I worked for in Sittingbourne who had one PC and that was in the reception and no one was allowed to touch it. <sighs> Big NHS contract, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, so um, what do you do about securing your data? Right? Okay, I know it's a requirement, isn't it, now to secure your data and all that. I've to save you an awful lot of um, research and everything. I've just bought a Synology 1815 plus network attached storage okay so if you're uh, not in charge of the information technology in your place or you're not interested in uh, in what you can do to make your life easier as a principal then fast forward uh, but if you want to like just a quick recommendation from someone who sort of knows the subject and has done all the research and is very tight with money then I'm your man. <laughs> it's a, Synology is a brand leader in network attached storage that and a few other firms like QNAP and uh, Drobo and but um, Synology is a sort of uh, slightly above the rest in terms of um, the, what, what they offer you know and now why why I mean you may have all your data just stored on a computer and uh, you know, perhaps you've designated one of your computers as the server, which a lot of dental systems do. They just have one, you know, one PC has the data on it, and all the other PCs reference that computer. But the the problem comes when that computer blows up, you know, or the hard drive on that computer dies. Then what do you do? And what a network attached storage is, is an external box that all of the computers can just use as a drive. It just appears to them to be one of their drives. But it's not, it's in a cupboard somewhere. And um, the beauty of that is that if any of your computers blows up, you can just unplug it, plug another one in, and all your data's still there exactly where you left it. And because it's a dedicated box, it's able to make multiple redundant copies of the uh, data so you can have three copies for example so that if any di one disk in this multi-disk box blows up then you, it doesn't affect your data it just beeps and sends you a message that says, please plug in another disk and it's a sort of uh, infrastructure that was only available for you know quite large multinational companies 10 years ago but now we can all have it you know and the networking aspect of it again which is the thing that trips most people up it's not that complicated this thing takes I think eight disk drives and I've got six plugged in six uh, three terabyte drives so that's obviously six threes or 18 but that gives me effectively 13 storage 13 terabytes with um, this multi multi-layer redundancy uh, of which I've used five and I think I've got eight left. So five terabytes is, I mean, will be more than you need. Five terabytes, I only need five terabytes because each one of these uh, video things is three, two or three gigabytes. And which, and they, so these are big files, you know, I mean, really you, you might only need like a, a three disc box with a three one terabyte drives or something, but I'm talking I'm talking about you know if you need something that's a bit meaty you know something that's uh, <clears throat> does a lot and it's enabled me to consolidate all my data so all my data family data that was on the computer at home so that's all my everything I've scanned all my uh, legal you know sale and purchase agreements for all the various houses and businesses and all the family photos and the family video and everything that, that was stored at home which I had this massive problem about, you know, what happens if the home drive packs up. 
and then and all the business data that I've got, all the all the um, patient data, the patient X-rays, and everything has all gone on. It's all been sucked up, and it's so great to have everything on this one great massive NAS. So Synology 1815 Plus. I'm not. They're not paying me to say this, but I just I did think that I would um, mention from time to time anything that I've found to be really useful in general dental practice um, just to save you time and to let you know and this box does a ton of stuff I mean now now what I can do is I can uh, you know I always had a problem with if I had the data at work and I was at home I couldn't really get in touch with it you could do by sort of using TeamViewer or something to dial into one of the work computers but TeamViewer is, is for, for various technical reasons it's, there's a problem with it and then, or if I was at work, um, you know, my accountant would say, well, can you send me a copy of the sale purchase agreement for the practice? And I think, well, that was, you know, that predates my work files. It literally was, I did all that on my home computer, so that's all at home. And so, so then what do you do? You've got to start trying to dial into your home computer or wait until you go home and stuff like that. So. And uh, I can also, so now I can access it over the internet quite securely, so I can get any file, any file I want to. So if, uh, you know, I need to look at some, I don't know, an employment contract or something, I can just uh, to get, get into the server over the internet. And um, the other thing I can do is uh, they, they've got apps for your iPhone and your Android. So in fact, you've got all that functionality on your phone as well. So if I'm in London, say at a meeting, and someone says to me, you know, uh, when did you last have hepatitis B injection or something, I can I can just get into the server on my phone, go to the right directory, look it up, and and let them know. So it's great, I must say. Uh, but that's <laughs> the trouble is, I'm a librarian at heart, and moving all this data around has um, given me this carpal tunnel. So I know. Funnily enough, another tip, computer tips today, obviously, is um, if you do get that, then, uh, and it's always usually your mouse hand that gets it, it's from clicking, too much clicking about, um, then get yourself a tablet with a pen. And use the tablet with a pen, just a small one. Uh, I forget who makes them. Anyway, uh, just a small one, you know, like, like an A6 uh, tablet or something, and then or an A5 tablet, and use that with a pen. And you can, they're very good, they can, they can certainly replace a mouse, and if you use them to replace a mouse, then um, you'll find that after a couple of days this will all go away. But it's a surefire sign that you're spending too much in front of a keyboard when your wrist starts playing up. You can't, you can't flex your hand back, you know. Anyway, so Easter's coming up. It's a lovely, another gorgeous day in paradise. It's really, really nice today. It's a blue sky, sun. And uh, of course, I'm gonna be locked indoors, slaving over a hot gob. But um, Easter's coming up. Now, I don't know what you do about Easter holidays. We have to, um, being a small practice, there's only like one and a half dentists and a hygienist, and so, what we do is we uh, decided this year to close the practice. So last year I tried not to close the practice. Last year what I did was I tried to with our, our one and a half dentists and, uh, and then we had two nurses and uh, a receptionist last year. I'm going to sneeze because of this bright sun. Does it make you sneeze? Bright sun makes me sneeze. Apparently it's something to do with a, my ocular nerve overlapping with my olfactory nerve. So when the ocular nerve gets overstimulated, it irritates the uh, olfactory nerve and my brain thinks that my nose is irritated, so it sneezes. It's, a, it's an angry trait, it runs in the angry family. It makes us even angrier. So yeah, so when I had um, my last surgery I had sort of three practice, three uh, uh, surgeries running, and uh, in this one we've got three chairs, but they're not uh, by by no means are they occupied all the time. So 
what we used to do was to have the situation where the staff had four weeks a year holiday and I asked them to take it one week either side of Easter and two weeks in August and then there was a week pretty much between uh, December and New Year which we, we'd tack a day on usually beforehand or after you know just to make it up and that worked quite well because the surgery was open all the time it didn't appear to shut so what happened was let's say the week before Easter we had one nurse one dentist and one part-time receptionist off and the other part-time receptionist used to cover full-time and then the week after Easter the other dentist the other nurse and the other part-time receptionist had the week off and the other receptionist covered full-time if you see what I mean so so we stayed open but now I don't quite have enough staff to do that I don't have enough staff to keep the place open when with one dentist one nurse and one receptionist off that would just leave like one part-time nurse and one part-time dentist so and no receptionist so um, I've decided last year was a bit of a disaster because we tried to do it the the original way I described and basically what it meant was that for two weeks we were understaffed and you know we couldn't really we couldn't really do much and that was a real nuisance I mean you get a load of people there's nothing that makes me more angry than staff hanging around who can't do anything in fact I if I have to take a day off and I know that the receptionist and the nurse are still going to be working there I just I can't you know it makes it ruins my day off <laughs> thinking thinking that they're there paid to you know but but I they do have things to uh, get on with you know the accounts and checking stock in stock and stuff they deserve to have a day you know break to do the background tasks my my uh, last surgery um they they literally decorated the waiting room I had a week off and they had a they decorated the waiting room and made a bloody good job of it as well. <laughs> I did, you know, did it really nicely. That little bit of paper around the ceiling and all that, you know. So um, yeah, so last year we took a, got a financial, quite a big financial hit because. Um, sorry, I can't see a thing. Well, a video of me crashing into Manston Airport would be would be quite funny and probably go viral on YouTube. I'd rather not star in it. So what we're doing, we're having the week off before Easter and we're shutting the whole surgery. So part of what we do is we do email the patients and so much is done by email now. I mean, you know, you used to have to, um, what, I mean, what you used to do was put a message on your answer phone and you used to put a message up in the door so that anyone who rang or visited would get this message saying, I'm sorry, we're shut, you know, in an emergency, please ring, blah, blah, blah. Now you just email everybody. And it's a sort of a tradition. We have a, an email, what to do if the Easter Bunny gives you toothache. And at Christmas we have another one, what to do if Father Christmas gives you toothache. And basically it just gives the patients the information that they need to know, which is that we will be closing at 5.30 on such and such a date, and we will reopen at whatever on such and such a day now this time I've actually put the the reopening time um, in the past I found that it was quite a good idea to put a slightly later time so supposing you're going to be reopening on uh, 8:45 on the Tuesday after Easter then um, if I was in a really busy practice I would say we're going to reopen at 9 30 on the Tuesday after Easter because um, you know you'd get you'd get a ton of people sitting on the phone or waiting outside the door literally for you to reopen. Oh, sorry, another another junction of death. Here we go. And so, what you needed when you come in after a, after a holiday period is you need some sort of time just to get back in the swing of things you know there's a ton of mail probably waiting for you and you need to have a chat about what you've done and everything you don't really want you don't really want to cure people waiting outside to come straight in or with with real severe problems so it just gives us a chance to ease our way in 
And also say to the receptionist lot on the first Tuesday I get back, please, they'll be under a lot of pressure to really, really get that morning booked up, you know. But say, look, can you lot really get the afternoon booked up, but just not the morning, you know? Just in the morning, what I'd like to do is have a lot of space to be able to see emergencies, you know, and people who, you know, need to be sort of seen as soon as we reopen. Mind you, there's not a, I mean, you know, <laughs> we've, we've only got 500 patients. So how many of those are gonna need urgent treatment? But I can guarantee that one or two of them will require that we reopen the surgery. And, and in fact, so there's not so much pent up demand for the Tuesday after Easter, because if there is anyone with an urgent problem, we probably will have reopened the surgery and seen them in the meantime. Which, I, you know, personally, I don't mind too much. If it's um, if it's a fee-paying patient, we charge I think uh, 200 to reopen the surgery and about 120 to take a tooth out. So the 320 quid, I don't mind strolling down the surgery. And and more importantly, the nurses. You know, you have to have a nurse. Um, I've got two nurses who are incredibly brilliant. About if I if I ring them up, like if it's a holiday and I ring them up, then and they see it's me on the mobile phone, they will not let it ring out you know or press decline or something knowing knowing what because they know what I'm going to ask them you know I don't ring them up in the holidays and just ask them if they want to go to the cinema they know I'm going to be ringing them up asking them if they want to go back down the practice uh, and either of them will do it and if the other one can't she'll tell the other one and the other one will say yeah yeah okay I'll do it then so that's brilliant but then you know if you're going to ask for that sort of commitment from your workforce you have to reward them for that you know they have to there has to be something in it for them you have to bung them something for helping you out like that and if you're charging 320 quid for an extraction you can afford to bung them something quite nice can't you whereas um, if you're uh, you know if, if you're not then they will let the phone ring out and you will find yourself turning the compressor on and uh, the sterilizer, doing the sterilizing and everything. And good luck to you, my friend. <laughs> I can't find anything. And I know, I think I know where everything is in the surgery and I can't find, can I find anything? You know, I mean, you know, I could probably find a mirror probe and tweezers, but then if somebody needs like a Mitchell's trimmer, do you think I could find a Mitchell's trimmer? Or a hand scaler or something? <laughs> oh no, oh no, no, no. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the plan with the Easter What's It's, and we use um, Systems for Dentist software. So I've sent out this email to all 500 of them with instructions to sort of stick it on the fridge, and um, and uh, in the summer we're going to have two weeks off, but we're going to synchronise those two weeks again. And uh, then what we do is we I always break up on Christmas Eve lunchtime, and. Uh, we never book up Christmas Eve. It's always left free of patients, so that if anyone's got toothache, they just come straight in. If no no one's got toothache, then we just have a morning off. You know, it's great. And if no one's booked in by 11 or 12 o'clock, we just all have a glass of Baileys and go. And then we're off between Christmas and New Year. And then if that if that's not you know the full statutory five days or whatever the week that they're owed, then. Um, you can just tack another day on somewhere, you know, just say, like, take another day in, in January, whenever, whenever you like. And you, you're allowed to do that as a small firm. As a large firm, you know, if you're British Telecom or ICI or something, then you are expected, really, to bend more to the employee's wishes because you've got the flexibility to do that. But it's understood with a small firm with, like, only three employees, like we've got, um, you know, you have to work together. You have to pull together. And you can in, you can insist that they take their holidays at, at, on a certain day. In fact, they they don't now have four weeks; they have six weeks holiday, because that which is generous. So um, yeah, yeah, he is in my parking spot again. Yeah, I know what I know what you're thinking. Yeah, is he in the parking spot again? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. never mind. He, he's actually he's earning a lot of money for me at the moment. So I'm not gonna upset him you can have my you can rent my parking space for three thousand pounds a day I don't mind
Hey. Yeah, there you go. So, have a lovely day. Sorry I can't talk about something profound every day, but you know, it's just nitty gritty. It's like Ken Weeks used to say, you know, you don't have to do something profound every day. Sometimes you just have to make sure someone puts out the teaspoons. Okay, have a nice day at work. See you tomorrow. Bye.